Hi creators, today I was making a help video and I wanted to show you how to put together a basic animation using masks, using merge nodes, using basic motion in the fusion page. And there's some really simple tricks that you can do. And I think you'll really understand this and be able to take off putting together animations on your own. This works in the free version or the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. So here we go. Okay, so my composition result is going to look a little bit like this. We're going to have a couple of folders and I'm going to show this file going from the download folder to the title folder. So pretty basic. And what I did is I'm using Affinity Designer and I've created a couple of graphics here. And so we can take those. I want to export those as when I do an export. Uh, this isn't an affinity designer. You can use Adobe. You can use whatever you have available. You're going to want to make sure you export these as a PNG with the transparent background. And so here's the basic composition. And I'm going to go ahead and start this project new. So you can see it from scratch. Okay, so I'm starting now in the edit page. And so I have a blank composition. And since this is an animation, I'm probably going to want to create a timeline with 24 frames per second. So I'm going to hit Control N. If you're on a Mac, you want to hit Command N. So that will create a new timeline. You can also go up here to Timeline and create a new one. So I'm going to say Animation. I'm going to use Custom Settings up here. You can use whatever you want. You can use 30, 60. Uh, just for animation, I think 24 frames a second works the best. But if your overall project is 30 frames per second, go ahead and use that. So this is where you check it here under Format. Go back to the basic settings. I renamed it to Animation. I'll go ahead and create that. So now we have our timeline in place here. Let's go ahead and add some of these graphics that we've created. Okay, so I have these three graphics. I'm going to go ahead and just drag and drop them from the file location into this uh, media pool. Make sure that that is selected so you have that window show up so you can drag and drop them. And I've got my effects library open. When you click these, they will turn off and on. And I also have the inspector open. We're gonna need that open. So make sure that is clicked and it's white because we're gonna use that throughout this process. So now we just have a basic timeline with nothing really on it. We can put these graphics into Resolve if we'd like. I can drag it in there and it's gonna show up. I can animate it. I could make it smaller. Uh, I could make it move around here. So say I wanted to move it from the left to the right Go ahead and arm the animation with this little button off to the right. And then I can move it somewhere over here, move the position over here, and we can see what that does. So over time, it's gonna move over there. Uh, that That is possible. You could do all your animation right here in the edit page. I think it's a lot more powerful to do it in the fusion page. So I'm gonna show you how to do it that way. So. What we want to do is to go down to effects, make sure, like I said, the library, uh, the effects library is open, go down to effects under toolbox. There's a fusion composition, drag and drop that onto the timeline. Uh, don't worry about the length of it. Just make sure it's, you know, at least four or five seconds. Mine's set up for six. Yes, it is. And so make sure that that composition is selected. Go down here to the bottom. There is a button to get to the fusion page. I'm going to go ahead and add my graphics down to the flow area. So I'm going to drag them one by one just so I can control it. And if you want, you can rename these. It's up to you. So to rename them, you just hit F2. We can call this download folder and to see what they are once they're down here because it's going to automatically name them media one media two etc uh, we have these viewing windows up here and two by default if you only got one just click this button it'll go between one and two and so if we click one of these buttons or we grab it and drag it it's going to show that image up there so if i drag it up to the left side there's my image this one if i click on this right button, there's my image. So I'm gonna select this one and hit setting and I'll select media two and this is the titles. So I've got those renamed, I know what they are now. And so 
we have these images, but they're not together. So we have to use merge nodes to do that. And so this is right here up on this menu here. We can go merge. The other way to get there is hit shift space bar and you're gonna get a menu that pops up here and you can just start typing merge. And you can click it there and go ahead and add it. I need more than one, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that in there. So I wanna get these two folders together here. Let me move this one out of the way for now. And I also need a background, so I'm gonna drag that background down there. Like I said, you can also use the shift space and search for background. Um, if you have your, your menus and your windows set up differently than this, but this is the default setup. So background one, and we can select the color here. I'm just gonna leave it as a black. If you wanna change it, you can pick it here, and then it is going to change. So now we have a gray, and this is a dynamic window up here, so it's gonna see whatever that we place in there. I'm gonna leave it for black. And so when we use a merge, we're going to have a couple of different options. We have a, a mask node, we have a foreground, and we have a background. In this case, the background, obviously, we want to put it in the background. So I'm going to drag it to that node connection there. Let's go ahead and put in the downloads. I want that on the left side. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the foreground, and we'll see what that looks like. So now we have that graphic there on the screen. And I'm going to position that a little bit over to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and use my full merge to move it over. It's okay to do that. Uh, we can also use a transform if we need to have some more fine control. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute, how you use those. So now on the, the titles, I need to add that in as well. So I'm going to need another merge. So this one now is going to become the background and the titles is going to become the foreground. Remember, it's the green input there. And so let's look at that one now. So I can move it over on the inspector here, like I did before, or I can just really just drag these arrows that become available when this node is selected. And so I think that looks pretty good there. Okay, so the last one I have is, is this uh, settings. It kind of disappeared off the screen there. So I need another merge node to do that one. Let's go ahead and drag that one in. Connect this background node and I'll connect the foreground node. And so let's take a look at that one now. So now we have this, this little file here and I wanna make it start in this folder. I wanna have it come up here, come over here and then go down into this folder. And so you can see what the issue is right now with the way this is set up is it's kind of over the top because I've set that as a foreground. If I switch those, now it's kind of the behind everything and it's scaled based on the size of the background, which is that smaller piece. That's why you're not seeing anything there. So I'll go ahead and switch that back. And so we have kind of this folder up on top. And so this is where we need to use masks. And so conveniently in this merge node, we do have a mask node here. So that's really great. And so let's go ahead and use a rectangle. I'll drag it in there. I'm going to go ahead and name that mask. You don't have to do this, but just to keep it organized for you guys. So now we have a mask. I'll put that on the left side there. And this is the shape of the mask that we have here. And... So you can see that this mask is not attached yet, but it's showing up in my composition on the right side, giving me an idea of where that is in relation to the original drawing. I'll go ahead and pull it into this mask node and you can see what happens. And you can see what it's doing is it's showing me everything inside of that mask node and that's the opposite of what I want. Okay, so to change that, we need to go over here and there's some buttons available. Make sure the inspector is open to see this. And there's an invert here, so let's go ahead and select that. Now, it's going to mask everything now that's inside of this black area. And so you can see, I can't see that folder, but when I move it away from there, you can. So I wanna resize this mask and go ahead and make it so it's going to block everything down below the bottom of this edge of folder. So let's go ahead and do that. And to do that, you can see I've got some options here. I've got a width 
and I've got a height. So there's the edge there. And one thing that, that I do have also is a, a location. So I have a center X and a center Y. So I'm going to go a little bit higher here. I'm going to just bring it down with this Y location. I'll go ahead and actually make it quite a bit wider just to give myself a little bit of, of air control just to clean that up and I'll bring the width out as well. So let's go ahead and take that media out for now out to the final composition and I don't love that black there so I'm going to change that background right now into something that matches these colors a little bit better and I think kind of really a blue does well there. Okay, so now I need to do the animation. So let's put this on the left side. Behind that, that mask, this setting, I'm going to need one thing. Okay, so we can see there's no transform controls that are built onto here or animation controls to move this graphic around. And so there is a node that's called a transform node. Just go ahead and click on it. It's going to add this transform node. And then I'll reconnect that into the foreground. And so now transform should be selected on the node structure here down in the flow area. Now I have these center controls. I have pivots. I have size, aspect, angle, etc. available to move that around. And I can animate all these. You can see these buttons out here to the right. So now you can see the outline of my setting file kind of beneath the folder, which is really what I wanted to do. So let's go ahead and start here at the side at zero and I'm going to go ahead and arm these the center point and if you wanted to change the size you'd go ahead and arm that now I don't really want to do that so I'm going to move it out here a few seconds just to give it a little bit of a delay and then I'm going to go ahead and hit a animation key point again and then I want to move it let's go about 15 seconds 15 frames I'm sorry I'm going to move it up here and then I'm going to move it over about 15 frames and then I need to hit that key point again so it makes a stop there. Let's go ahead and go through that so it's going to slowly come up here to this point and then say if I want to go 15 frames to the right or 15 frames I'm going to move it right. Let's go ahead and move it over there. And so let's see what that does. So it's here here, here. So that's pretty good. And then let's take another 15 frames. So let's go down to 50 and then we'll just move it back into the folder there. So let's see what that looks like. Up, side, down. So that was a little fast when it went from kind of 20, frame 20 to frame 35. So I didn't like that. So let's open this keyframes and we can take a look at what we're trying to animate there. And up here there's a, there's a selection menu. And I just want to say show only selected tools just to simplify this. And if you see these arrows here, you're going to need to open that up so you can see your path. And now um, if this looks really small, you can slide this over and then this resize point will we'll kind of spread it out. And then you have this slider here to make it bigger. Okay. So that's kind of what I want to look at. So I have this 20 point and then 35. And I want to slow that down. So I'm going to go ahead and select these two key points. You can see when I threw that box around there, it selected both of those. And I'm just going to drag them over to the side. Let's take a look at that now. Up, over, down. That looks pretty good. So these curves here, you can see are, are very linear and that's really what I want. I want it to look very kind of, I don't know, boxy animation. Okay, so if we wanted to fine tune these, these lines and like I said, I didn't, we're gonna need to use the spline controls here. So go ahead and select that and I'm gonna turn the keyframes off for now. And we need to make sure that the these points are selected to show the curve. So Displacement was what I was changing here. And so now we have these linear changes. You can see uh, we can tweak those. If I want to all be the same speed, this line should have been perfectly um, a linear line. It's pretty close. 
uh, and I just did that by eye. But if you wanted to tweak that and get it to be the same speed throughout, you just make that line linear. Um, but we do have some options. If I wanted to change uh, the smoothness of this, this say this curve here, so it goes into a movement and then it kind of stops there. I could select it, right click on it and do an ease out. I do also have these buttons down here that I can use if I have curves selected. And so if I wanted to change this into more of a smooth curve, I can click that and you can see that kind of smooth that out. I can also bend these around here. And if I right click on here, um, I have all these options available in this menu as well. If you start adding too many points, you can reduce points. There's, there's just a whole lot you can do. And we can also save these curves if we want to use them for another project. Uh, you would just name this as a group and you could save it. And so let's go back now into the edit window and we'll take a look at the results. And so this composition is, is entirely too long. And so probably about here, I'm going to go ahead and just drag that back to that point. And so I have this set on looping here. So I'm going to just play that through. And it's still rendering. Once it turns blue, it's fully rendered, which it is now. So that's what we're going to see. And so that that's the easy way to do animation and use masking. And looking at the curves, we can make that animation look as good as we'd like it to look for as much time as we want to spend on it. So hopefully that will very much help you out with just some simple animation. Like I said, the free version or studio version, this will work in both of those. So hopefully you can create some nice little animations for yourself and for your projects. And you learned a little bit about DaVinci Resolve. And the simplicity of using fusion nodes, it's not really that hard. So try to dig in and, and learn some things. So thanks again for watching today. Take care, guys.